Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. So I really apologize for my croaky voice. I went to the football and I screamed and shouted too much yesterday. And as a consequence, voice is gone. So in my pursuit of trying to find, for me, the perfect awning, I've got a new product that I want to share with you. It's called a Moonshade. I've had this for a couple of weeks. I've had to make a few modifications to make it fit the L322. But I'm going to actually take this out of the bag pretty much for the first time and set it up and show you what it looks like. Now, those of you that follow the channel know that I was going to go through um, and change all my setup last year and get away from my rooftop tent. And because everything in this vehicle is pretty much out the back here, whilst you have the overhead tailgate, my pull-out kitchen comes out quite a long way. And a couple of times when I was out in Spain last year, I got soaked to the point where I needed some sort of shelter. And I know plenty of people have said, get an awning, get a, get a 270 awning coming out the back. I am not a big fan of 270 awnings for a number of reasons. Yep, I think that they are excellent products. There's very, very few 270 awnings that are in a two meter long footprint. And so what that means, you end up with huge amounts of the awning jutting forward and back. And if you go through any sort of branches, trees or closed in areas, if you go off road, you're gonna catch something. Um, there's plenty of videos of people that have got things wedged into the front of their awnings and it just becomes a trap. And now that's not the only reason. The second reason for me is they weigh an awful lot. So when you're looking at 25, 35 kilograms of weight on one side of the vehicle, my whole objective with this build now is to get weight off the roof, get everything lower down. So on the channel, you can see that I've got a nature hike gabled end awning. Now I do like it, I really do, because it will attach on two poles and it will go out this way. And there's some pictures I'll throw in here so you can actually see what it looks like. And you can drive the vehicle into the back, open up the tailgate and you've got shelter. Now the downside to it is it is quite big, it is quite long and it probably takes about 10 minutes to set it up. If it's windy, it's really difficult to set it up. And so this, I think, is a better option because it is more rigid as opposed to the other longer type of awning that I've got. Now, I have got some tarps and I've not really played around with setting tarps up as well. So I'm going to be doing the Trans Portugal for a couple of weeks, about 10 days in September. And I'm going to take some tarps with me and see whether that is an option as well. So anyway, I've been rooting around. I saw a bunch of guys that have got one of these called a Moonshade. I'm gonna set this up. I'm gonna put the camera over here and then I'll show you how it looks and whether this actually fits. I'm pretty sure it will. Um, I've just got the cover, the canopy out the back. I think it's seven foot by nine foot and I'm sorry for not putting it in meters, but it should be enough to provide put decent sized shelter out the back. Right, so this is the moonshade. One thing I like about it is that the bag is really big. I think a lot of people that buy camping gear and things like that, the worst thing is, is when these bags, they may fit when you first get the product, but as soon as you open them up and try and roll them back in, they don't fit. So the thing that I really love about this is that there is plenty of room. Now I've had this out. I've obviously had to get it out. Um, and I'll explain some of the reasons why. Um, Comes with really good strong poles. They have these suction cups, and these allow the other options of fitting this to the top of a vehicle. I've not tried these. They've still got the plastic on. It's not for my uh, my implementation. The way that I'm going to fit this is that this is the strut pole, and the strut pole, although it's got a little bit of scratching on this already, the only way I can fit this to my vehicle. is on these red eyelet bolts. So what I've had to do with these, these are on these are M6 nuts, or actually M6 eyelet bolts with 19 mil openings. So this is 19 mil in diameter. Now the problem I have with these is that these things, they're formed. So obviously they're steel. You get these ridges on the forms when they make them. And so although it might have 19 mil, the problem I've got is I had to grind these down 
to get the 19 mil opening. So it took a while to do because again, these are tough and steel. These eyelet bolts are strength rated as well. So both of these now provide the ability for me, one there, one there to mount the strut pole. So the strut pole is important for the, for the moonshade is it gives it an anchor point. And without an anchor point, you would have to use the cups, the suction cups on something like this. I wanted mine more permanent. Okay, so what we're gonna do, and I'll try and do this in one hand or two hands, put the strut pole together, feed it through up the top here, and then we'll start to figure out how to lay out the awning. Okay, so that's the strut pole. And as you can see, it goes through both eyelets on either side. So there are a set of poles in here. So it also comes with the suction cup mounts as well. So you can mount the strut pole with suction cups. So in theory, you could put the suction cups on the side here further up but for me because I've got the eyelets I can use it this way so there are a set of poles in here which we'll save for later and then we've got the cross braces for the awning okay so let's set up the awning So like a lot of these products, there's clips. And let's set up the other one. Now this is really well made. There are pockets in the bottom for where these uh, poles go. Right, and we lift it up. Okay, now we need to figure out which side goes to the strut pole.
Okay, so that's the basic setup of the awning. There's quite a lot of shade under here. Um, and the great thing I like about it is that it's not going to impact the way that it's domed. So inside there's plenty of hooks. You can hang things off of here. You can put a light up here. There's a, a little small carabiner here. There's carabiners on the corner as well. So what you can do here is connect the carabiner to the pole. And then clearly you can guide the pole down if you need to guide this down. They are adjustable. And you can see it's really well made because there are pockets here for the loops that go over the both sides again you can actually fit walls with this as well there's a long wall and there's a short wall and i believe they attach through the carabiners um, so you can put walls up i haven't got the walls over here you can see where the strut pole comes across and into this grommet and again this pocket is really tight really well made all double stitched and there's a carabiner here that will go over the strut pole to be able to make sure that doesn't go anywhere. So as you can see the carabiner, it's got this loop. You can just lift the carabiner up and this will stop losing the pole and keep them nice. So I actually think this is probably a better option than one I have here. I have my little... So I have my J-Cop and my J-Cock could quite easily fit into here. It gives me enough space, it gives me coverage. I could actually put my j -Cot out, it's waterproof and sit over here. It still gives you coverage. Um, the one thing I do like about it is, it's got this re reflective material. So this reflective material here, it, I can feel it now, the sun's on it. Um, it's still quite cool under here. Um, but you can definitely feel that it's, uh, I'm not sure it's ripstop attached. As I mentioned, there are some really strong, this is webbed, this is double seam. They've got these pockets for the struts that go over the top. And again, the same thing on this end, the carabiner will go around the strut pole. You can see how they're sat in there. It's really strong. I think it's definitely going to need to be guided down, but there are loops in here where you can actually add guides onto it. Um, it is a bit windy here, so I'm going to have to hang on to it. So, I do like the fact that there are lots of hoops on the inside. There's what one, two, three, four, and a center one where you could add a light. You can buy walls for this, and you can also buy sort of like a, a door from here. I don't think it's watertight, I think it's just provides sort of shelter. But I believe what they do is they clip over the top of the poles, clip to the carabiners, and then you attach them here and then you end up with a wall. So you can get two of the long ones or one of the shorter ones. But anyway, I really like this. Um, it, it's not very warm, but the sun is definitely beating into this. Um, the material, it's ripstop. I'll put some links in the descriptions about what the material is. Um, it definitely has this sort of, it's got some sort of reflective material underneath here. Um, I'm not sure what it is, but you can definitely feel some heat on it, but it, it feels good. And as you can see here, that's where the strut pole goes through these eyelet bolts, nuts. And then again, there's another loop here where you could probably put that through to give you some extra protection. This is the moon showed. Okay, so this is the moon shade awning. Initial impressions, love it. Uh, it's light, it's compact. It's easy to set up, it's quick to set up, two and a half minutes, I could probably knock half a minute off of that once I get used to setting it up. But yeah, for me, it looks like it could be an alternative to having that big nature hike gabled end top. I still take it with me, because I actually like it because of the way that it is quite long. Um, but I think this is an option. Um, it definitely gives you protection from all of the, uh, the elements you could run into.
Comments down below, let me know what you think about the Moonshade Awning. I'll put a link in the description if you want to go check it out. Please don't forget to like the video. If you like the video, please just like the video. Don't forget to click and subscribe. 2,652 subscribers. Thank you, each and every one of you. Channel's growing. Let's push on and try and get to 3,000. And with that, I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.